Hey everybody, how's it going? My name is Chris, this is my shop partner Oots, and in this video I'm going to be building some really cool live edge epoxy fly boxes. It's going to be a fun project, we're going to learn some stuff, so let's get started. I recently did a woodworking event for the Filson store in Detroit, and I wanted to make some fly boxes for them to give away. After seeing all the epoxy river tables lately, I thought it'd be really cool to try to make some fly boxes using that same concept. I found some really cool, unique pieces of wood that I thought would be perfect for these, so I cleaned them up, then laid out the sections that had the most character and the best grain pattern. Then I cut out the pieces at the bandsaw and cleaned up and squared the edges using a couple hand planes and a shooting board. If you're interested in seeing how I made this little wooden smoothing plane, then check out the video here at the top of the screen. I made a bunch of forms from melanine and then I put some clear silicone caulk in the corners so the epoxy doesn't seep through the cracks. Before I do my full pour of epoxy, I'm going to seal all the wood by brushing on a layer and letting that cure for a day. This will prevent bubbles from being pulled into the epoxy from the porous wood. 24 hours later, I put my pieces in the forms and then pour in my epoxy. You can't use any type of epoxy for this. You need to find an epoxy that was specially designed and formulated for thicker castings like this. I'm using a casting resin from System 3 epoxy called Mirror Cast. Then I'll remove the screws from the form. The melanine didn't stick too bad, but for any bigger application, I would use a sheathing tape as it does a much better job of not sticking to the epoxy. Melanine can cause problems on bigger pores. I will square all my pieces using the table saw, but then over at the band saw, I'm going to take a three quarter inch board and resaw a quarter inch from it, leaving another board that is half inch. I will use these two boards to make the body of the fly box a little bit later on. Then I take my live edge epoxy tops and resaw them in half so that I can get two lids from each casting. And the band saw looks really cool going through that epoxy. A buddy of mine then ran the pieces through his drum sander to remove the bandsaw marks, but then I finished smoothing and flattening them with this little sandpaper station. Now I'm going to drill a couple holes so that I get my fret saw in and cut out the middle of the middle section. After I clean up the cuts, I'll then glue that to the piece that I resawed it from earlier to make the body section of the fly box. I think if I were to do this again, I would make a jig for my router, which would have made making the body section much quicker than this version. So I experimented in making two different styles of fly boxes, one that has hinges and some that have lids that will swing open from a rivet. 
So here I'm drilling a quarter inch hole for one of the fly boxes that uses a rivet. To make the rivets, I take one of my steel diamond sharpening plates and I turn it face down. Then I'll place a piece of scrap wood as a spacer over it that has a hole drilled in it. Then I place a scrap piece of steel that has a quarter inch hole drilled in that. I'll then drop some quarter inch copper rod into that hole, into the steel and wood until it rests on the steel diamond plate below. Then I'll mark about 3 16ths above the plate and cut it to that length. Then I drop the piece of copper back into the hole and start peening over one side. I tried brass too, but it became work hardened too fast and didn't work as well as the copper did. Then I'll slide the rivet through the fly box and peen the other side. I was careful not to smash the copper too much and cause the top to split. I would check the tension of the lid frequently and was very pleasantly surprised at how well this method actually worked. I tried it on one but liked it so much that I did several other boxes in the same way. Next, I'll flush up the sides and add some chamfers and apply a little boiled linseed oil to the maple box. Later on after the oil dried, I also added a couple coats of polyurethane. The other style of fly box I make uses hinges, so I mark and cut out the hinge mortise using a chisel and then install the hinges. So I decided to experiment with some of the boxes by carving some texture into the lids using some gouges. You can see all 12 of the different boxes at the very end of the video and I would love to hear which ones you liked and if you liked the textured carvings or not. On the walnut boxes, I used some of this Mahoney's walnut oil, and I was really happy with the color that came out. If you're interested in this or any of the other tools and products that I use, I provided a link to my website down in the description where I list those all out for you. Plus there's merchandise and plans and a lot of other cool stuff. And if you're new to my channel and haven't already, please consider hitting the subscribe button and that bell icon so that you get notified anytime I put out a new video. I really appreciate that. Next, I'll drill some small holes for the rare earth magnets I'm going to use to keep the boxes closed. I mount them using 5 minute epoxy and I'm careful to keep track of the polarity of the magnets so that they actually attract each other and don't repel each other. I tried sourcing some foam inserts for these boxes, but I had a really hard time finding something pre-made that I liked. So I actually just found some high density foam and made my own jigs and these little inserts turned out really well. I'm really happy. Then I cut the inserts to size and glue them in place and I'm all done.
Now that I'm done with the boxes, I need to put some flies in them, and I thought you might like seeing me make one of those as well. This is a dry fly that's meant to float on the surface of the water for trout fishing. And if you stick around, I take these bad boys up to one of the many blue ribbon trout streams here in Michigan and get some fun footage of me fishing and catching a really nice fish. Then after that, I show all the boxes that I've made and I would really like to hear which ones you guys like the best. So stick around and comment on that. And of course the cameras weren't rolling when I hooked and landed this really nice rainbow trout. But it was a lot of fun catching and very rewarding catching fish on your own flies. I hope you guys really liked this video. Make sure you let me know which of these fly boxes or styles you like the most. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you learned something. Hope maybe you were inspired. And I really appreciate all the comments and support and likes. And we'll see you next time.